everyone. So in today's video, I am sharing with you all my everyday makeup routine. Honestly, if I'm putting on makeup, I'm either just doing a very quick like tinted moisturizer or I'm spending just a little bit more time, about 15 minutes to get this look. I love a soft and sort of fluttery eye, super, super seamless base products. I love for everything to look really well blended and I just want the makeup to have a sort of freshness. That's the kind of look that I go for on an everyday basis. So if you guys do enjoy it, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And of course, if you like me, I would love to have you back. So make sure to subscribe and also ring the notification bell as well so that you know when I upload next. So with all that, let us begin. So first up we have skin prep. So a lot of people talk about primers and primers are still a little bit of like a controversial step in a makeup routine. But personally, I use a primer to make my skin ready to receive foundation. But I do find that when my foundation goes on properly, you know, it's way less likely to look textured throughout the day sit funny on the skin as I continue to wear it. So I am personally a huge fan of prepping the skin. Whether or not you use a designated primer or just a moisturizer, totally up to you. My favorite is the Vitamin Enriched Face Base from Bobbi Brown. They actually came out with their Vitamin Enriched Eye Base. So a lot of you already know how obsessed I am with this primer. So I did buy the eye base. I didn't want to use it in this video though because that isn't a standby product for me yet. But if you guys are interested in it, let me know and I'm happy to try it out for you guys. My skin just looks so much better every time I apply this primer. It's really good at giving the skin a touch of a slip so that the foundation goes on really effortlessly on top of it. And it just brightens and like livens up the skin in a really beautiful way. There are definitely some days where I could apply this and just not wear foundation. I feel like it just makes the quality of my skin look better. It has like the easiest touch of a blur, but it's mostly just like a moisturized look. So what I like to do with foundation and primer and really like, uh, not kidding, like every step in an everyday makeup routine, the products have to be super dependable. I have to get consistent results out of them. So all of these products I stand behind and I've used over and over and over, but not only do they have to perform well, they have to be easy guys. For an everyday look, I don't want to fuss with products that are going to be a little bit finicky. So I'm now going in with my Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Foundation. I recently did an entire foundation collection video. I'll leave it linked down below, but I talked about this one and how it's like one of my go-to foundations. Probably my most worn foundation of this year. This foundation is really beautiful because it has a medium coverage, but it still looks really creamy, natural on the skin. The coverage isn't apparent on the skin. And just so you guys know, I have normal to dry skin. It really depends on where I'm at with my skincare routine, especially because I am on Retin-A right now. So sometimes my skin can be a little bit more dry. I've really never had a single issue with this foundation. It's creamy and natural, but it also wears a really long time. It's called Synchro Skin because it has a sort of self-refreshing quality to it, but basically all that means, in my opinion, is that it's a really movable foundation. As you continue to wear it, it won't settle into fine lines. It won't dry out or get caked up. So just a really beautiful formula all around. When I was picking the products to do for this video, I was thinking, oh, you know, I've been using the same products for a few months now. And then I realized that it had actually been like about six months. And then I got a little bit afraid because I realized that I'm not really processing time right now. Anyway, so I'm going to use my Kosas Revealer Concealer now. This has definitely been a staple. When I first found this, I tried it and I just haven't put it down since. It's a really, really beautiful, creamy, natural looking concealer that has some coverage. Really beautiful if you have dry, dark circles. You know, there are so many more high coverage concealers out there that are more geared towards normal, oily combination skin. But with dry skin, a lot of the concealers tend to be a little bit more sheer for whatever reason, at least I've found. This one has just been 
a total, total hit for me. And I'm very, very picky with concealers. So, you know, we're talking about a 15 minute routine. I'm always looking for little time saving tips. And what I like to do is let my concealer sit a little bit and it will actually keep the coverage where I've put it and give you even more coverage, give you an even brighter look. But because this formula is so good, it's not going to look dry or cakey. This is a very good trick. Try it if you have a more like dewy emollient concealer and you want more coverage out of it. But what I usually do when I'm letting this set down a touch is I go in and do my brows. This is my Hourglass Arch Brow Sculpting Pencil. I really haven't been using another pencil for a while just because I've been getting such consistent and just beautiful results from this. It is more of a slanted sort of tip, but what I've found is really nice about it is that you can just kind of hold it put that angle right on your brow, especially, you know, with my shape brow, it's really, really easy to do this. And I just run this along the lower part of my brow. This is where I have the most sparseness and where I want to kind of add a little bit more definition. Do you see how natural that looks? It really almost looks as if we put a powder into the brow. It just has a beautiful, beautiful softness to it. And this is a more expensive brow product. It's from Hourglass, but I would 100% repurchase. I personally find a lot of brow pencils to be a little bit too creamy for me. I think everyone has their sort of preference in what they find works best with their brows, but I have pretty coarse brow hairs. I don't need something really creamy or something to look really graphic on my brows. Pencil is a really pretty way to give me that definition, but it's not going to look too graphic. It also is very lightweight in the brows. You can't really see where the product starts and stops if you've applied it well. So I will set my brows in a second, but for some reason, I don't like to set them right away. I don't know, I'm a weirdo. Going to quickly, well not quickly, I'm gonna take my time because you know, it's not like I have anywhere to be. I'm just gonna do my makeup and then do some dishes. Oh yeah, and can we talk about the dishes, guys? Like, the dishes in quarantine are never ending. Um, I live in the city and I do not have a dishwasher. So it has certainly been a struggle because I already really couldn't keep up with my dishes as it is, but now that I'm eating more at home, I'm working from home, I feel like I do a bunch of dishes and then like I look over and there's just more there. But I have managed to watch about six seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race, nearly exclusively just washing my dishes. Like, you know what, maybe it's been a blessing in disguise. So let's move on into the rest of the face. We're going to do a little bit of bronzer. When I was thinking about what bronzer to pick for this video, I had to go back to my Fenty Matchstick and Mocha. I've talked about this countless times on my channel, but I've just kind of come to the conclusion that this is just like my favorite bronzing product I've used. The formula is exceptionally thin. So you know when you use a bronzer, especially a cream bronzer, and you can just see the cream sitting on the skin, or when you use a powder bronzer and it just kind of looks like a stripe, I have definitely noticed my bronzers can look just heavy on my skin, probably because of my skin type. But I also just think that there are so many bronzing products out there. And the matchsticks, I think, are such a unique formula to the market because the texture is so thin and it really just melts into the skin. You can see I'm using a small stipple brush from e.l.f. And by the way, this is like one of my favorite brushes of all time. As I'm applying it and blending it, it just looks like color. It doesn't look like a bunch of product. It doesn't look like a bunch of cream. So it ends up translating more like skin than a product would otherwise. Mocha is also a really good shade for me, I think, because it's not too warm. It almost kind of shapes the face in a subtle way. And I am going to take a bit onto my forehead as well. A stipple brush is also really good because, because the little hairs get between your actual little hairs on your forehead. So you won't have that weird line that you get between your hair and your forehead. It really helps blend it out and make it 
look super seamless, but definitely make sure at the end of the night that you're really massaging your facial cleanser like all the way up into your hairline. What an exceptional, exceptional bronzer. I mean, every time I wear it, I'm like, why do I even bother trying out other bronzer products? I'm also going to take a touch over the bridge of my nose. And when we get into blush, I'll show you why I also put a touch of blush there as well. Okay, so bronzer looks super, super seamless. And it really is a combination of this really thin texture as well as that good primer and a good tool, a really nice brush. With a sort of everyday makeup routine, it's really about finding that synergy between products, products that work well together and like to get along and be friendly with other products. That way everything just looks absolutely seamless. Next, we are going to go into blush. This honestly isn't a blush that I've been using for a super long time, but it's one that I've been really liking lately. It's the new one from Rare Beauty. Beauty, and this is the shade love. This is actually the matte one. I also have the shade joy as well And I really really like this one. It's a touch more dewy But I think there's something really special about the mattes It gives me a sort of blotted blushed look that I think is super super pretty also this color is just Absolutely gorgeous. You know, we're kind of transitioning into fall now. The color is so pretty for fall because it has almost a brick sort of undertone to it. But you can see it looks really bright on the cheeks right now. And these are pigmented, you know, you don't need a lot of product, but look at how the shade blends out. Do you see that beautiful pop? The formula and the texture is also super thin, so it just meshes and completely melts into the skin, but it has that pigment and it's really going to last on the skin. So I'm very, very interested in trying other shades. The dewy ones also last a really long time, but I think there's just something so beautiful about this matte formula, how skin-like it looks. I do think that it has a ton of pigment and some people might be afraid of that, but you'll get the hang of it. You will once you keep playing with it. Using cream products is all about practice. I actually have an entire beginner's guide to cream blush, so if you're interested in figuring out what cream blush is going to work for you, figuring out the best way to blend it and make it look good on your skin, I will leave that video linked down below because I think some people are intimidated and you definitely don't need to be. If there are any edges that you think could look more seamless, just take your sponge. It probably has a little bit of foundation and concealer on it and just take it over those edges. And it's like, holy crap, I am a master blender. And then I just take a touch of what is on my brush and just place it onto the bridge of my nose. I've always loved how youthful it made my skin look, especially because it's almost like you've got a little bit of sun on your nose. But I think what makes that so beautiful is that it almost looks like your skin is sort of shining through there. It makes the rest of your makeup look a lot more natural. It looks like you can see the skin through your foundation, even though it's just the color that we put on top. I would highly recommend trying it. It just gives your whole look this more youthful touch. And I'm also going to take the excess blush and just mesh it into the bronzer up onto the forehead. I know it seems weird to do this, but believe me, it'll really tie everything together. And it doesn't look like I have blush on my forehead, but everything looks a little bit more seamless when you do it that way, at least in my opinion. So now I'm going to quickly set the brows. Again, I don't know why I do it in this step and not when I'm already doing my brows. I think it has something to do with me like having a sponge near my forehead and all of that. Like I'm afraid I'm gonna mess up my brows if I do it earlier. But this is the M Cosmetics Brow Gel. I always forget what it's called. Oh, it's called Flexi Brow. This is their clear brow gel. And you may or may not know this. I am a clear pomade person. I think clear pomades give you a really sort of feathery look. And I think it just looks so natural. Very sort of model off duty sort of vibes whenever I wear a clear pomade. I love that brow look, but ever since I have used this clear brow gel, do you see how it still gives me that really feathery look and it's holding the brows up? 
but it doesn't look crunchy. I mean, that is something that I never liked out of my clear brow gels that it just kind of appeared crunchy on the brows. It appeared like kind of shiny too. And this has a matte finish and it really holds up those brows and just looks natural in the brow. I definitely think that's because it does have that more matte finish. All right, now I'm gonna switch lenses. We're moving on into the eyes. So for my everyday makeup for the eyes, typically what I do is put something into the crease and then put a sort of topper shadow on my lids or I'll just use one cream shadow all over the lids as like a one and done look. But today I'm going to do a matte shadow in the crease and then a sort of sparkly top coat on the lid. If you guys are interested in seeing like my absolute favorite one and done shadows, make sure to leave me a comment down below. I'd be happy to do that video. I'm actually kind of interested in doing it myself. So for the crease, I'm going to use Hanky Panky. It is a super shock shadow from ColourPop. I just love these super shock shadows. The mattes are just so blendable really easy to work with. They're creamy matte, but they don't look heavy on the lids. There are definitely some mattes, both in powders and in cream form, that just look a little bit heavy. This one never looks heavy, but you can see it how soft and blendable it is. Side note, I have a dog named Hank, so I also always laugh when I hear the shade name. So he's like totally like a dog's dog. My first dog, Kit, she is so like human-like, like she's so emotive with her face and she's super intuitive. I just feel like when we talk, she's really listening to me and she's just like, she's my pride and joy. I love her so much. But when my boyfriend and I were thinking about getting another dog, and we chose Hank, it ended up being the perfect dynamic that we had one dog that was like super intuitive, very emotionally in tune with me. And, but it's also been nice to have like a dog's dog, like, like the exact personality you think of when you think of like a dog's dog, he has it like super food motivated, like just happy to be around. He's not like too energetic. He's definitely a Hank, if that makes sense. Okay, now that I have that down in the crease, I'm going to go in with a little bit of a topper. This one is from Hourglass. It's the shade Smoke. It is absolutely gorgeous. For an everyday look, you might be like, hmm, why are you doing sparkle? There's something really beautiful and glossy about this sparkle. It's super sophisticated and doesn't look like a lot of chunky glitter on the lids. It almost just looks like a shine and a glossiness. It really doesn't look like a bunch of glitter, but it just completely melts into the lid and just offers some shine, a touch of dew. It's not dewy whatsoever. It's a completely like pressed glitter pigment, but it looks really creamy on the lids, which I think is why I really like it. There are so many shadows out there that just look heavy on the lids. I can't stand when my lids look like they're weighed down with product. And with an everyday routine, this is like my perfect shadow look. Super flattering blended and totally blown out. They're blendable in a way too that they're not like raining fallout all over your face. You can see there's no fallout on my face. It's just all creamy product on the lid. I feel like my voice is getting raspier throughout this video or maybe it's not and it's just in my head but I am so thirsty for specifically a sonic limeade right now like not a cherry limeade which i also really love but just a sonic limeade well there is one like 20 minutes away but i don't think i'm at that point yet where i'd be like all right i need to drop everything and go there for like a limeade okay anyway i'm <laughs> going on a tangent about sonic so taking hanky panky again and now I'm just running it under the lower lash line, just a touch. Totally mimics the look that we have going with the skin. It's all really working together. It looks super blown out and natural. That is definitely what we want. So now I'm going to curl my lashes. This is my Kevin Aquan eyelash curler. I 
love this lash curler so much. And you know what guys, I'm feeling a little bit fancy. I'm not gonna go crazy here, but something else I really like to do sometimes is go in with more of a chocolatey liner and just put like a little bit on the outer edge. Like I won't even really put it onto the lid too much. This pencil is the 24 seven glide on pencil from Urban Decay in the shade Whiskey. And sometimes what I'll do is just like, do you see I'm just haphazardly putting it on the outer corner here? And then just take some sort of brush. This is like a flat brush that you really shouldn't do this with, but whatever. <laughs> and then I will just flick it out a little bit. You can see that it's very subtle, but do you see the difference? It's much more rounded, which I think is also pretty but how this one gives you just a touch more of an edge and a winged out sort of look. It just adds a touch more definition to that outer corner. I think it looks really pretty. Sometimes I will skip this step, but you know, if I'm feeling like I need a little bit more definition on the eyes, I will do this. It's super subtle, but I think it does make a big difference. Now I'm using CoverGirl Lash Blast. This is totally a holy grail, an everyday staple for me. I love it because you can see that it is super separating, but it's not too defined. It's still really wispy and it makes the lashes look really long. I never have trouble with the way that this mascara wears on me either. Just gives you that like perfect fanned out look. It's really like my perfect mascara. I mean, honestly, the amount of times I've talked about this mascara, is kind of insane and it's so affordable so there are the eyes all done super soft you know when you look down you kind of get that glimmer but when you have your eyes open it still looks really awake really really like that i would hope i would like it if i am pretty much applying it every time i do my makeup next let's move in to highlight so i'm not gonna lie i'm not applying a highlight every single time i do an everyday makeup just because i feel like i have enough glow going on with my skin prep and my foundation and just like the other products that I've applied. This to me is enough glow. Sometimes if I just want like a touch of highlight, I will go in with one of my Beauty Light Wands from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Pillow Talk shade. I also really like the Spotlight shade, which is more of a true like champagne. This one is a champagne with just like a touch of gold. It's not like a true rose gold, maybe like a light rose gold, but I will just add it to the very tops. And I absolutely love this because it doesn't look like a lot of product on the skin, but it's super glossy. It never looks textured on your skin either, but you, you can see it's giving you light. Honestly, sometimes I think it's difficult to find a really beautiful cream highlight because some don't give me enough of a wet look and they look kind of chalky. And then some of them really give you that glossiness from far away. And then you look up close and they're kind of sitting on the skin. So this is just like a very perfect balance for me. And now going into the lips, this is the Rowan Liquid Lip Balm in the shade Charlie. As an everyday lip product, this is absolute perfection. It just makes the quality of your lips look better. It has that sort of light pigmentation to it so comfortable, so fuss free. Do you ever come across like makeup products that you're like, I wish I made that. Um, this is absolutely that product. I can't even think of a single thing that I would change about it. Maybe I would ask for more shades, but that's just because I'm selfish and I want more shades. See how it makes the lips look so pillowy and so comfortable. I'm just, I love this lip so much. And this is the completed look. So I hope that you guys really enjoyed it. Again, this look is super blown out, very natural, definitely more skin focused, but I love how complimentary everything is. The skin goes with the eyes. Everything works together. And I think that's what's really important about creating your own perfect everyday routine. So I hope that you guys did enjoy today's video. And if you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up. I would love for you to subscribe too, so make sure to subscribe as well. And with all of that, I will see you guys in my next one.